Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Super Fantify. This being a show where I talk about TV shows of the supernatural, fantasy, and or science fictional genre. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of American Gods. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. That intro... Um, I'm wondering is that kind of, I, I'm wondering is that intro kind of in reference to a little bit of what Whiskey Jack brought up last episode about like all oh, the people you brought like your followers you know and you getting fat off of like basically slaughtering my people like I'm wondering is that what that is because I don't know if that's I mean it might be connected but it might not be but uh, I, I'm curious because it seems like. With stuff that goes on later on in the episode, because they talk about, like, you know, uh, lakeside Nordic history, which I'm like, um, interesting, Nordic history connection, considering, hey, you're a, um, you're the son of a Norse god, you know? But I'm like, I'm assuming, I was like, okay, so all that stuff at the beginning is about probably lakeside's history, and which is like, oh, I mean, to be, I mean, that's the sad truth about any place, but definitely here in America is the, um, sad and bloody history that it has not just sad the very fucked up uh, and bloody history that it has so i'm like okay and and i think maybe that's the contrast they were going for because obviously you have like Anne marie being like oh here's all these things about uh lakeview and, it, and i said lakeview where am i getting lakeview um i think i wonder did i say lakeview the entire time that's why i kept wondering every time i saw lakeside i was like did i say lakeside last episode and i kept saying lakeview i don't i don't know regardless um with lakeside like you know, the contrast between, you know, Emery saying all these wonderful things about his history. And they're like, oh, it's this and that. Uh, I'm aside from like, who, she was referencing one person. It's like, oh, they, they own something. And she was like, yeah, it's sad. That person died from something and wearing a diaper or something like that. Um, there also, like there was a wealthy person who basically gave their money to the town when they died to basically keep up the Nordic traditions and stuff like that. But it's like. Like I said, to compare and contrast, because it's like, oh, all these wonderful, amazing things, but it, but it was built on such a effed up history. I mean, maybe there's a deeper, darker element to that. Because um, I'm, I'm going to skip right to it, just because I'm going to be all over the place, so I do apologize. But the like the shadow, I'm assuming that's supposed to be the Thunderbird that was referenced at the beginning. Um, so I'm wondering, like, not everything's going to be great in town. Um Maybe this is a sort of retribution in its own right, which I, I don't know. I don't know what to kind of make of that, whether that's supposed to be, especially how that kind of ties into stuff later on with the whole Allison thing. I don't know if there's any correlation there. Maybe, you know, in a sense, you know, maybe Lakeside is kind of cursed because of its bloody history. And that whole intro is also interesting, too, because it's like uh, there was a storm coming in and they made a sacrifice to the Dark One. Maybe they referenced this about him in season one. I didn't realize they called Chernabog the Dark One. So I'm like, oh, was that a tribute made to him? Because they did reference the hammer. And I had kept rewinding. I was like, hammer? I was like, is it, is it not about Thor? This is because they referenced someone else. Because to be fair, like every, um, because that's the thing. Like gods have different names and different, you know, because even Thor, his name is Donar. Because I think it, that's his German name, uh, you know, um. Uh, just like uh, Odin is Voltan, you know, to Chernobog. So it's like everyone had, every god's like, I guess from different, you know, because I guess mythology-wise, a lot of places overlap with, uh, or maybe it's just like their name. Like, you know, different places and different people have different names for gods. So I didn't realize that they might have been referring to Chernobog because there's a storm rolling in, which I'm assuming, oh, uh, it's supposed to be Odin. And then they made a sacrifice to the dark one and a light shine through. So I was like, okay, was that supposed to be like, or was that just Chernobog coming towards them? And then it's like, you made a sacrifice to me. Oh, it's all good. Or was that supposed to be a like reference to like, Maybe Odin and Chernobog meeting for the first. I, I don't know what that, whether that's what, I mean, because it's, I think that's also an effed up um, contrast too, because it, you have like the storm breaking, a light shining through, and like looking at that little girl's lifeless body. That was like, that's super dark. Because it's also effed up. It's like, yeah, you get to just, oh, uh, save us from this storm after we slaughtered a whole tribe of people. You know, that it just it, it adds that dark element to it. But um, Shadow gets into his new place, uh, I, you know, that whole complicated thing, which his property manager is played by the actress. I've never seen the show. I've only seen bits and pieces because I've talked about it uh, because my, you know, my mom and my sisters watch it, uh, Power. 
So I was like, oh, it's the actress, uh, I think it's Leela, uh, the actress who plays um, Angela from Power. So I was like, oh, shit. Because I, I remembered seeing her in some of the promotional material, but it just slipped my mind that she was in this. I was like, oh, hey. I didn't know what role her, what her character was going to be in this show. So I was like, oh, she's a property man. And part of me was wondering, I was like, because that's the thing you're always wondering, like, is that, is that person a god? You know, and you might not even necessarily be a god. Well, hell, I mean, even I was about to say that, it's like, well, even the quote-unquote leprechaun in the show ended up being a god, so I mean, he was just kind of, obviously because of Matt's history, that ended up, because of everything that went down, he became a leprechaun, even though he's a sun god. But I was, you know, you're always suspicious of everyone. It's like, are you actually human, or are you actually something else? Because Lakeside seems like it's just a regular place, but the fact is that Odin wants to sit, you know, Wednesday wants to set him up there means there's definitely something up with that place. And maybe that history, whatever this is, maybe, like I said, maybe it's related to the Thunder God, uh, not Thunder God, the Thunderbird. Maybe that is what, and the reason why I keep just referring to it as the Thunderbird, I'm going to butcher its name every time, so I'm just going to refer to it as, because there was talk about, um, they were praying to the Thunder, uh, bird uh the face off against the horned snake um which i'm wondering maybe that, like i said maybe that had something to do with the whole allison thing i don't know but he gets invited to you know a memorial for zariah he was invited by one of the other zariah siblings the one he kind of has a bigger connection with and she was like make sure you bring the coin um you know and like i said Marie was giving him the run of the town he has one of the past pasties as they were saying, um, it's a town, and I think maybe that's also another thing too, because he's pretending to be someone that he's not, or whereas he's living in a town where everyone gets to know everyone. For him, he's like, I'm just kind of passing through, but it's not the type of town you want to just be passing through, but you're kind of there for a reason, and you don't know what that reason is. But uh, he ends up renting a car, you know, because I love that him and the, pro it's like, oh, I'm his property manager, and Chad's like, oh, you two have already met, it's like, oh yeah. Very, yeah, you know, at gunpoint. And Chad's looking like, oh, she's like, well, he was breaking in. It's like after a key fiat malfunction, it's like, well, he's like, Chad's like, the better option would have been to call, you know, me, a cop, to handle that situation. But um, I knew something was definitely special, something at least important about that car when Chad ends up asking her, it's like, oh, can he borrow, like he wanted, you know, to get to Chicago for Zariah's memorial. Uh, you have Chad suggesting, oh, that car in the back, it's it's been sitting in Sandy's. And she's like, it's not for sale. But, you know, he makes a point, you know, Chad makes a point. I just want to rent it. But Chad was saying something about, like, oh, it's, you know, we've been sitting here for two years. And I'm like, oh, uh, so Shadow didn't necessarily latch on to it until maybe later on. But it's like, you immediately go, like, whoever's car it is, like, it's very important to her, and they're not around anymore, and then obviously when he gets inside, and he puts in that CD, and it's, like, someone singing, and it's, like, she's, like, it's her son standing, you're, like, oh, okay, he's not around anymore, especially later on, because it's, like, oh, like, you know, cause he, he assumes, like, oh, like, your kid's off to college or whatever, so it's, like, oh, like, you know, what, where is he, what's he studying, and she just kind of avoids the subject, I think at that point, Shadow kind of goes, okay, um, it is interesting that he ended up running into that deer. And part of me, once again, this is what this show does to me. Like, the deer he hit, I was like, is that actually Allison? Did she turn into a deer and that's why she hasn't come back because she got injured? Like I said, my mind goes down that wonder. But it's like, it set up a set up some stuff that I'm like, okay, I wasn't... Well, since we're on the subject, I'm going to talk about it. I didn't expect the whole, like, oh, he gets back in town. Everyone's giving him a cold shoulder. I immediately thought, like, oh, they think it's effed up that you're rolling around in... Um, her son's car, because everyone else in town most likely knows what happened to her, uh, to um, the property manager's son, Sandy. Um, people probably know about that. He's, I thought that's why everyone in the place was giving him a stink eye. It's like, oh no, because Allison went missing and immediately, like, Mike, the new guy in town, which is effed up because it's all, oh, hey, hey. But then it's just kind of like, mm, yeah, sure. You know, everyone's giving him a stink eye and even Chad kind of having to question him. And the reason why it got brought up too is because the property manager saw that the windshield had been replaced. She would know better than anyone, like, what state the car was in. She was even saying, bring the car back any exact state it was in. So so she saw that, you know, the windshield had been replaced and everything. So it kind of made her more suspicious. I mean, made everyone kind of suspicious. But luckily, him and the property manager are on better terms because it's like, well, to be fair, 
you, um, I, me and you kind of got on the wrong foot. That whole gun point thing was kind of messed up. And he was like, yeah, it was. Also, the fact is, it's like, oh, actually, the heating actually does work. It's just that she turned it off and just never, I guess she just, she was just not in a good mood. So, I mean, it might be, you know, she's still in that grieving period because the way Chad made it seem like it's been two years. At the very least, it's been like two years. So, she didn't bother turning the heat on. So, I just, I just thought that was so interesting. I'm curious to see where that storyline ends up going. But, um, obviously, Shadow had shown, uh, you know, circling back to things, Shadow ends up back at, um, well, in, in he ends up in Chicago, which, you know, Mr. Ebus and, um, Salim are there, just because Salim is looking for the gin because they parted ways. Obviously, they were together in Cairo at the end of, um, season two, but it's like the gin said, like, you know, he went off on a mission for Wednesday. Now, whether there's validity to that or not. Mr. Ebus is saying, you know, maybe the Jin's feelings have changed, but for Selena's like, I need to hear those words for him myself, you know? Even later on saying that, even saying that Shadow should have let Mad kill him last season. But, um, obviously, like, you know, Shadow did honestly show up just to pay respects but, you know, Wednesday saw this as an opportunity when he found out about it. Um, I did love that later on he's like, wow, literally everyone but me was invited to this whole thing. Because it's like, it's just what Shadow brought up last episode. It's like, who have you not pissed off? Like, no one wants to be around you right now. I mean, especially because in certain regards, it's kind of like Zariah died because she got dragged. You dragged her into your war and obviously missed the world at the time. Obviously wanted to, you know, make a point. So, so, cause also Chernobog's like, why are you here? And then it's just kind of like, I, my, I still owe you the hammer. And it's like, Wednesday's like, Hey, you know, I'm, I wasn't invited either, which is effed up because it's like, Oh, he was actually, uh, Shadow was actually invited, but Wednesday wasn't. So it's just kind of like a, Hey, let's drink, let's celebrate Zariah. But obviously Chernobog sees through it. It's like, you're not here to like mourn her. Uh, which I also love that whole bit about like, oh, like I loved every moment with you, but I hated everything you cooked with my entire soul. Uh, it just got every meal was worse than the last. And it's just like, oh, there's a beautiful effed up ness to it, you know. But Turner Boggs, like I see, going back to it, Turner Boggs, like I see through you. You're not here to mourn Zariah. You're here to rally the troops for your war. And it's like for your stupid war. And it's like, can't I do both? You know, because we want revenge for what happened to Zariah. So he's rallying all the other Slavic gods around. Um, while Shadow, you know, has a talk with the younger Zariah. And, you know, she talks about kind of his destiny, you know, him, you know, coin is like him, half in light, half in shadow. And it's like, you know, it basically represents the two damn, the, the two paths that he's going to have to walk down. Well, he has to choose between. And it's like, you know, his, it's like your heart and your mind, your head and your heart aren't aligned because it's like, he's like, I just want to live a normal life. But it's like, there's a part of you that's tempted by your father, everything that he is, you know, all the power in which for him, it's just, it's also because he wants answers. It's like, I know this is my dad and he spent his entire life with questions. But every time he asks those questions, all he's ever gotten the entire series is the rigmarole of like, you know, vague uh, answers and riddles and responses. And he just wants clear answers. But for Zariah, it's like the stars can't reveal everything. It's kind of up to him to kind of reveal and find out a lot of that on his own. But her giving, taking the coin and putting it back in the sky. And it's like, but if you ever need, you know, the moon, this moon will always guide your way. And he's like, now that was worth the drive. And I was like, I thought that was such a beautiful, I, I like that. Like, you know, she took it to make the coin and put it back. I'm assuming he has a coin later on. So I don't know, I guess afterwards she took it back. So I guess it's like, you always have it look to it to be your, continue to be your guide through everything. Um, then we find out the Cordelia situation is like, oh, because he sees through Cordelia. It's like, really? You're the old man's fiance? Like, what hustle are you playing? She's like, I'm not doing a hustle. I'm just being me. And it's like, she's literally the new shadow. It's like, she was hired. She did some hacking. So it's like, um, did some hacking and got busted. And it's like, part of your like, well, we know shadow situation was set up. So you can only assume 
her circumstances might be the same. Like the reason why she got caught and everything, it's just to put her in a position where, you know, because she's like, oh yeah, I answered a Craig's, a uh, Craig, I said Craig, uh, Craigslist uh, post. So, it, you know, especially that it's like, yeah, I get paid to drive, you know, around Betty. And it's like, once again, she's like the new Shadow because Shadow walked away from all of that. I mean, to be fair, now that Shadow kind of knows who he's supposed to be, I think Wednesday's kind of like, no, nah, like, yeah, I'm, you're still in, under my employment, but I want you to kind of go off and do your own thing because it's necessary for um, where what your destiny holds. Like, whether or not Odin knows for sure what his destiny is supposed to be, who's to say? Uh, I don't think anyone knows other than Shadow. Because even, you know, Whiskey Jack last episode was like, even I can't see that far. Zoraya can't really help him in that regard either. So, it was just a situation of her being like, yeah, I've set up some, you know, the phone situation for him. And it, it was like, oh, what about the pay phone? She's like, yeah, that was super old school, huh? It's like, yeah, but here's this number. If you're not even just to talk to him, if, you know, you need someone to lend an ear to. And for him, it's like, if it ever, ever becomes too much, which it will, you know, likewise, you can call me up. Because she didn't get it at the time, but it's like, you know, for him, it's like he knows being on that other side, coming into this, not really understanding everything, and then just having, you know, it all be too much. That's why he kind of had to walk away from it all. You know, it's like, especially, you know, when you're living a normal life, no matter what your circumstances are, and getting dragged into this whole God situation, it's a lot. And speaking of gods, there was a whole quick thing with Bill Quist, which I thought was interesting. Uh, she ended up eating that IT dude, uh, dude who runs like an IT company, which she hasn't done that since season one. Like she didn't do it at all in season two, I guess, because this is, I, I chalked that up as kind of her going back a little bit to her old school way of, you know, her whole thing. Cause I think worship has been in, well, I don't know. She might've, maybe she has been doing that the entire time. I don't, it didn't seem like it. Because this is the first time they made note to show you that she... Like, it seems like it's been the first time she's done it since season one. But I could be mistaken. But afterwards, she starts throwing up. So, I don't know whether that's supposed to be, like, representing, like, her not... Like, because I think for that moment, she was getting into it. She felt that thrill again. And maybe, like, maybe kind of the heart and head disconnect isn't just there with Shadow. Maybe it's there for her as well, where it's, like... Because at first, like, it was about, like, her computer having issues. I don't know whether he, him being head of an IT company had anything to do with that. Because let's not forget the new gods, in particular, the tech uh, boy, is the one who set that whole thing up for her. So, I assume, like, it's like, yeah, you're still not choosing a side. And maybe this is their way to kind of, like, cut her off from all the help they gave her. So, maybe it's like, maybe that's supposed to be representation of she's not getting the whole, um, all the, the worship and following that she had before. Like, it's suffering, so she's kind of waning a little bit. Maybe that's what that was referenced to, or maybe that was just her, like I said, the disconnect between her head and her heart, where it was just kind of like, oh, no, I can't be this person again. Once again, the, the, the coin, love and war, right? So maybe there's some correlation there. I don't know. It's like a one-off scene that I'm like, I'm, what, what is that? You know, I don't know how to necessarily interpret that, you know? So uh, I'm, I'm curious to see where things kind of, you know, end up going on that front. I didn't, uh, I need to also circle back and talk about the fact is we got introduced to Tyr, uh, which I'm not that well versed in Tyr. Um, I only know about Tyr because of uh, God of War 2018, you know, the PS4 game. That's the only reason why I'm even aware of Tyr. Um, him being, he's like, oh, you know, obviously it's like, came to tap the war god and it's like well what and he was like why didn't you just wait till chicago it's like well because he didn't know what was happening in chicago because he wasn't invited but uh i thought it was interesting there was that letter um and it's like you thought he because later on he was like that you didn't think i'd see that you took the postcard and i was like because i kept reading your name i was like it was like was it it was like de it seemed like it was like demeter or something like that and i was like I was trying to think, like, who is that supposed to be? And then part of me was like, and he was referencing, like, she wouldn't want to see you or something like that. Like, Tyr was kind of just being like, don't go, leave her alone. And I was like, part of me was wondering, was like, would that have anything to do with Columbia? Like, maybe she has a different name. Uh, I can remember Columbia and Donar were thing and everything and until he kind of got in the middle of it. So I was wondering, was that in reference? Because he, maybe he hasn't been able to, maybe he hasn't found her since she was kind of the whole Rosie the Riveter thing. Maybe since then he hasn't really seen her because maybe she found out about Donor. I don't know. 
Um, maybe that was him trying to, or maybe there's something else. Maybe it's an old flame, old love or something. I don't know what to make of that. Uh, so I'm curious to see where things kind of go on that front as well. But like I said, I, I, I'm so curious about this Thunderbird situation, especially because it's like, well, he ended up seeing another bird in the woods. He ended up seeing a, um, he ended up seeing a uh, peacock. And there's also like when Odin went into Tyr's office, he turned that statue of a bird, the totem of a bird, and then like later on Tyr turned it back. So. I'm wondering, is that supposed to be in reference to, obviously, the opening where that, like, totem staff was, the, the, um, that guy was killed and his staff was thrown in the water, but it had a bird on the top of it, cause, you know, but, so I'm more, I'm guessing that's all connected, you know, which is interesting considering Odin's got the, you know, those, um, ravens or crows or whatever, so that, but him turn, that's why I'm like, that beginning had to have been correlating between, like, the, the Thunderbird, him, and Chernobog, at least they were kind of all referenced. In, I mean, at least it seems like they might have been all referenced in that. We'll, we'll see uh, what ends up becoming of that, but I'm curious. Also, like I said, this set up this whole Allison storyline. I'm a, Like I said, I'm assuming it's because Lakeside is kind of cursed. The whole one horn snake thing, which I'm like, was that in reference to um, Odin? Just because of the whole one-eye thing? But maybe not. I don't know. Like I said, we'll... We'll ultimately have to wait and see where everything ends up taking us going forward into the next episode. But really, that's all I want to talk about. Till the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.